Over the years, there's something that I've learned that's been incredibly impactful as it relates to um, generating more money in my business and in general, um, creating a, a more abundant life and a more uh, fruitful, positive, fulfilling life, both on the personal and professional side. And that is the way that I am attracting or manifesting those things that I want on a daily basis. Oftentimes, this is something that goes <laughs> unheard of or unspoken about as we have conversations around what it takes to make more money specifically. And so in today's episode, I wanna have a little conversation with you about the law of attraction, um, what it is to attract abundance, how to live in abundance, um, and how to reconfigure and rewire, if you will, your belief systems to allow for a more abundant uh, present and future outcome. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Welcome to the Hennapreneur Podcast, the exclusive podcast of its kind, dedicated to giving you an honest look at the realities of making a living as a henna professional. I'm your host, Chelsea Stevenson, a tea-loving, shoe-collecting mother of three in constant search for the most poppin' pair of earrings and the perfect shade of red lipstick. I'm also a professional henna artist and business strategist who went from barely being able to piece together a fluid design to being the owner of the most celebrated henna boutique in my city. I'm on a mission to help henna professionals to harness their skills and grow vibrant, profitable businesses that they absolutely love. If you want to make more money with your art, you are definitely in the right place. Let's get to it. Hey, hey, Hennapreneurs. Welcome back to another episode of the Hennapreneur Podcast. Today, I have a question for you. Have you heard of, do you believe in, or are you familiar with the idea of the law of attraction? So this is something that is really, really relevant as it relates to not just business, but life in general, and just the way that we shape the realities um, that we experience. This episode is going to be a little bit woo. And also, I need you to just hear me and understand that um, <laughs> whether you agree or whether this seems like a little far-fetched to you, these are um, things that have made a serious impact. And I do mean a serious, tangible impact in my own life and in my own journey not just as, um, you know, as a mom and as a, uh, just a human, right? Experiencing life in a way that I desire, wanting to have that richness and that fullness and that full sense of fulfillment in my personal life, but also as it relates to my business specifically and how I show up in my business um, and ultimately the bottom dollar, right? The revenue that my business generates. And so I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the law of attraction because this is something that as I started to learn more about it and lean into it, the more I realized that it truly does have a strong effect in the results that I was seeing in my life and in the, in the things that I was building and continue to build. So uh, the premise of the law of attraction is very simple, right? It's essentially that positive thoughts attract positive outcomes and negative thoughts yield negative outcomes. Now it seems simple enough. Um, and there are many, many different people with many, many different thought methodologies and ideologies. And um, when we get into the law of attraction and we get into quantum physics in general and manifestation and all these things, there's a lot of opportunity for things to go in many different directions. And I don't really want to take you down the super woo uh, path because I don't think that it's necessary in the context of this conversation. But also like, I just want to acknowledge that this is a, a content matter, if you will, that has a lot of different um, uh, nuances. There's some nuance about it, yet the premise is very simple. Okay. And so that's kind of where I'd like for us to start. So while there is so much space for us to get woo, you know, here, the fact is that when we feel positively and we lean into positive energy, we behave differently. And that's really what I want to call your attention to. When we feel positively about the possibility that exists in front of us, about the um, openness of uh, possibility that exists for us in our lives and in our businesses, we behave differently. We take risks. Uh, we take tangible actions. We allow ourselves to move outside of our comfort zones because we are believing in um, the possibility that everything is going to turn out great or that everything is going to turn out in our favor or that the universe, if you will, is at play 
you know, making us uh, or, or presenting for us or preparing for us the outcome that we're looking for, that we're hoping for. And um, this isn't this isn't rocket science here, right? Like when you feel good about something, when you feel, um, you know, called to do something or when you feel this uh, sense of security in that you are going to receive a good result, right? When you feel that sense of security in positivity, in optimism, then you behave differently. And um, where we focus our energy is where we can expect to see results. So if you are focusing positive energy towards your big audacious goals, then you can expect to see positive results in those goals as well, right? And so this is where I want to like start with that premise because I think that it's super important for us to have this uh, grounded foundation, if you will, of the context of this conversation. Um, because I see so many headpreneurs who really really deeply struggle with this. And I wish that we could have more conversations around it. Um, I wish that we could see more change. I wish that I could see more change in our industry. Um, because first of all, as artists, typically we tend to lean into um, things that are more, you know, woo, or we tend to be a little bit more open. Like that's just kind of the nature of uh, who we are as creative individuals, right? And at the same time, I see so much in terms of like limiting beliefs, um, limiting belief systems that entrepreneurs specifically hold. Um, and it really is self-defeating and it really is something that um, causes us to get into our own ways. So um, we have to be mindful of our subconscious mind, right? We need to be aware of our subconscious mind as that is responsible for around 95% of our outcomes um, in general, because it's responsible for 95% of our actions. Okay. So this is the thing. Our subconscious mind informs all of our behaviors, our actions, our identities. And this is super important because the way that we see ourselves and the way that we identify as human beings informs the way that we view the world around us, the way that we view possibility, the way that we view uh, life, right? Society, what is and what is not, what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's false, all of those things, all of those belief systems um, come from our sense of our our identity of self and our um, thoughts about the identities of others um, and the realities in which we live. And when our subconscious mind is overloaded with feelings of lack and of pessimism, of you know negativity and unworthiness, all of our actions will then yield an environment which reflects those same themes back to us. And this is why it's so important for us to be conscious. And this is it's kind of a you know a little bit of a, a, a catch twenty two here, if you will to say to be conscious of your subconscious mind because your subconscious mind is that thing that's like running behind, you know, behind the scenes in the background, just kind of informing everything. Um, it is our belief systems, right? It's those things that we've accepted as truths and we don't even think about truly. They just are for us. They are what's true. But as intentional individuals and as people who are, um, you know, aiming to create lives and businesses um, in a way that we want them to be created, right? We have to be aware of the subconscious mind and we have to nurture it and we have to take care of it. Um, and we have to reprogram it in many cases, reprogram it from the messages that it's been, um, you know, subjected to over the course of many times our entire lives. And so as we are leaning into addressing our subconscious mind, we have to take stock and we have to take inventory of the belief systems that we have that aren't serving us. And oftentimes that sense of lack and that sense of uh, pessimism, that sense of I can't do this, that sense of it'll never work for me, that sense of I'm not enough, I don't have enough, I won't be enough, I can't, I can't, I can't, period. All of those things are things that inform our actions. And money is no exception to this rule, friends. If you want to make more money, then you have to live in a feeling and a space of abundance. You cannot live in a belief of lack. And please understand, 
There are certainly experiences, there are certainly truths that exist that we can't ignore. So we can't ignore the fact that women in general make cents on a dollar compared to men. We can't ignore the fact that women in general in the creative space specifically, um, you know, are typically not taken seriously. And oh gosh, let's not even add in any sort of like, um, any sort of uh, diversity into that mix because we all know also there is a distinction between the revenue generated by white women and the revenue generated by women of color or women from other diverse ethnic or socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, when we're dealing with marginalized communities, there are truths that exist, right? Even just being a woman is sufficient. There's an uphill battle that happens there. So we can't ignore the fact that there are truths that exist. Um, but we can't also allow for those truths to be so heavy that they inform the way that we believe that we can build a thing, okay? And so this is where I challenge entrepreneurs because ours is an industry that's very unique. It is woman-led. It is an ethnic art. It is a community that is largely, um, you know, uh, full of people of color and full of people from different ethnic backgrounds that are not the 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 white female, whatever. And of course we do have a subset of our industry that falls into that category and that's just fine. But even there, there is inequity that exists. <laughs> there is certainly inequity that exists between um, white women and women of color inside of our industry. And this is not to go off on a tangent, but like I will take the time to say, all of us who are working inside of this ancestral art have the responsibility of um, leaning into and encouraging equity inside of our industry. And so that's a whole nother rant for a whole nother day. But I do want to just like, since we're already here on the subject matter, let's just go ahead and bring it up. Right. But back to our point, all of these things, all of these um, markers or identifiers, if you will, they're present. They're very much present. They're very much relevant to our industry. And so all of us as entrepreneurs um, in one way or another are likely falling into one or multiple buckets of people who do face very real challenges when it comes to growing their business. And that's okay. It's okay for us to acknowledge that. We also need to acknowledge the fact that if we solely take those stats, if we solely um, accept those data points as truths and don't allow for ourselves the space and the belief that we can uh, supersede <laughs> the glass ceilings that have been imposed upon us, then we will not supersede them. We will not surpass them. We will not break them. We will get in our own way. And this is why it's so important for us to be cautious about um, how we feel about money. And we need to be so cautious about how we feel about our ability to make money, our ability to generate money. We have within us every power, if you will, to make, to create the life that we want. But we have to be willing to believe that we can. That is the first step. You have to believe that you can. And so if you're living in a place of lack, it is going to be damn near impossible for you to reach a place of abundance because if your belief system says, I don't have the money for this, I don't have the time for this, I can't do this because I'm not fill in the blank here, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not artistic enough, I'm not pretty enough, uh, I don't speak clearly enough, I'm not interesting enough, I'm whatever. Like none of that. That cannot be the belief systems that we live in on a daily basis. And so if your subconscious mind is coming to the table with all of this baggage, no wonder you can't show up for your business. If you're coming to the table with all of this baggage, no wonder you're not taking the actions that you know your conscious mind knows that you need to take, but subconsciously you've made the decision, this is not for you. It's not gonna happen. There has to be a transformation here. And that transformation is going to come back directly to the way that you nurture your subconscious mind so that you can attract the things that you want, okay? And so as it relates to money specifically, if you want to make more money in your business, first of all, you need to get super freaking comfortable with saying, I want to make more money in my business. Why is it that we're cautious about that? And even so, I'm actually going to take it a step further because our language is important. And so if you say, I want to make more money, you're actually affirming, you're acknowledging your desire. You're also actually affirming the lack. I want to means that 
already you do not have, that you are in a place where you do not have. Why not reposition that, right? Because every word that we're saying also comes from our subconscious mind. So if we're saying, I want to make more money at a subconscious level, what we're affirming is, I don't make enough money, which is a negative. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? And so as we are leaning in, if you will, to better nurturing ourselves, our subconscious minds, and as we're more heavily leaning into the energy of money and attraction, we actually want to say things that are positive. We want to say things that are going to keep us at a more positive and abundant vibration, all right? So instead of, I want to make more money, you can say something like, I believe in my ability to generate more money. I believe that my art is worth money. I believe that money flows to me abundantly. I believe that money comes to me with ease. I believe that people value my art enough to pay me handsomely for my services. We can say things differently, affirming what our wants are without also informing ourselves of this place of lack and do not have and cannot do and am unworthy of. Does this make sense? This is one of the things that I have done now for a long time. Part of my journey as it relates to, you know, leaning into this law of attraction and really uh, nurturing my own subconscious mind to the abundance of money and to the energy of money and to, you know, my affirmation that making money is easy with my art, in my business, with my skills is by doing small, uh, you know, everyday sort of like signaling of abundance in my daily practice. And these are things that you can do. It doesn't cost you a bunch of money to do them either, right? But we're working to reprogram our brains. We're working to change the way that we look at money and to change the way that we look at abundance and to elevate that feeling of abundance in our lives um, so that we can rewire, if you will, rewire our brains and our belief systems away from um, lack and away from this feeling of, you know, pessimism and like negativity. So for me, part of signaling abundance in my daily practice looks like a couple different things. For example, every day when I sit down to work, you know, I come to my desk and I sit down to work and I have a, a pretty glass that I purchased. Um, and listen, this is what I mean. It does not have to be, you know, super expensive, whatever. I found this beautiful glass. I purchased it on clearance at Target at some point and um, I keep dollar bills in it. I keep large bills in it. Specifically, you know, when I receive tips from clients or, um, you know, often when I go out and work private events, uh, I'll get tipped with 20 or with 50s or with hundreds. And so when I'm tipped with these larger bills, I'll put those bills inside of this cup and the this beautiful glass sits on my desk. And while I'm sitting to work on, you know, the things that I need to do behind the scenes in my business, I'm literally looking at money. Um, and it reminds me that money is abundant. Now, I didn't start that way. It started with, you know, I would hide money in places that I could see it regularly. So like I would keep an extra $20 bill folded up in the dash of my car, or I would put, you know, a couple extra bills, you know, a couple extra fives folded up and I put them in the back of my wallet or I'd hide, hide money in different places. So then when I would be going about my daily life, I just kind of bump into it and it'd be like, oh, hey, oh, hey, look, there's some money. <laughs> Slowly but surely, it created this space. It created this environment in which I felt abundance. And it's like, okay, money is always there. Money is always present. There's always the opportunity for there to be more of it. When I need it, it's there for me and I can generate it when I want. Um, another thing, and this isn't even dollar bill related. One of the things that I like to do is, um, you know, on uh, my days off or on the weekends, um, doing little things like turn down service for myself. So if you've never had turn down service at a hotel or something, you know, a turn down service is when you go and they literally, they will prepare your bed and prepare your room for you, for you to go to sleep. So when you order turn down service, you know, they will dim the lights in the room and they'll like pull the sheet back. So you just can like slip right into the blankets. Normally they'll be like, you know, perhaps there's a chocolate there or there's something, you know, there to help you relax. So this is one of the things that I'll do for myself you know, on my days off or on the weekends or when I'm feeling like I need a little bit of extra luxury in my life, I'll do this. And it's very simple. What do I do prior to, you know, going to bed, you know, I'll go and I'll 
pull down the sheets, you know, fold down the sheets so it's ready for me. And I'll have my little piece of chocolate and I'll prepare, you know, a, a cup of tea to steep. Um, I'll have a book perhaps, or depending on the day or what I have planned, maybe I don't, maybe I'll have a face mask, um, you know, like, uh, a, you know, a small face mask that I've prepared. And this could be something you prepare for yourself at home. Um, or perhaps you, you know, purchase a small face mask or you get a tester, whatever. Like there's so much opportunity for us to create luxury and to create things that speak to abundance without actually costing a lot of money. It's about the energy that's there. It's not about the dollar. Okay. And so, you know, I might have that face mask and I'll prepare the face mask and have that ready for myself. And so I'll go shower, you know, take a hot shower, come back to bed, do the things that make me feel really nice. Maybe spritz on some perfume or put on like a nice, uh, you know, rich body cream. And then I'll, you know, slip into bed. And if it's face mask night, then I'll put my face mask on and watch some Netflix in bed or like whatever that is, but something that feels really luxe and really luxurious. And that feels abundant. And it feels like, um, you know, like treatment of self in one of the highest ways, right? Really caring for me. Um, and it's not just that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be something that you do every day. Maybe this is something that you do, um, less frequently or something that you can do once. And it kind of pays off over time for me, like I buy myself flowers. So one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do is to buy myself flowers. Um, every week or two weeks, depending on how long my flowers last, I'll go to the market and I will buy different uh, sets of flowers. And I actually don't even purchase arrangements. I purchase the different flowers based on what I feel that week and you know what they have there, what I like. Um, and I'll grab a bunch of different items and I'll put them all together and I'll actually assemble the bouquets myself. And I'll have these different arrangements then spread out around my house. So I'll have flowers in my office and I'll have flowers in the kitchen and in the living room and in my bedroom. And so all of the spaces that I go to inside of my home have these fresh flowers. Now, fresh flowers, you know, is that a big deal? No, it's not really a big deal. But I'll tell you what, I remember when I couldn't afford to purchase fresh flowers. I couldn't, I remember... I remember when a $12 bouquet of flowers, and I'm talking about like, you know, the flowers that are already put together at like the grocery store. Yeah, I remember when that was a stretch and I would look, I cannot, I'm not even making this up. I would go and I would stand at the display and I would look at all of the flowers and I would take in the energy of, oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. And then I would tell myself, I can't afford it, like $12 for flowers. Do you know how much food $12 would buy? I'm not doing that. And I wouldn't purchase them for myself. So today, you know, for me to go to the market and I can spend, you know, $50, $60 on flowers and then have them for the week, like that's significant for me, not just because of the way that it makes me feel in my home um, and the joy that it brings me in my home, but also because I can tie that to the memory that I have of not being able to do those things for myself. And so not only does it affirm the fact that, you know, abundance exists around me and that I, I am attracting, um, you know, these uh, through this very simple, this very simple signaling of abundance, right? I am attracting the life that I want and, you know, the money that I want and that in general, the experience that I want, it also reaffirms that what I had back then like I can honor it and I don't have to be that person anymore, right? I can honor that and I'm deserving of the things that I, that I wanted. I'm deserving of the things that I needed. I'm, I'm deserving of more. Okay. So I try to signal abundance as part of my own daily practice in these ways. And you know what? Sometimes it's hard. I want to acknowledge that, especially when you're first getting started with this like concept of manifestation and with, you know, when you first start being more aware in general of your subconscious mind and the belief systems that it exists, that it includes then it can be very challenging. And it's like, ooh, and you'll catch yourself. You'll catch yourself. And I'm not perfect at this. There are definitely days where I say things or I do things and I'm like, wow, Chelsea, like that's not coming from a place of abundance. Um, and I will, I'll have to reel it in. I'll also tell you something that's become incredibly obvious and apparent to me. When I shy away from this, meaning when I'm less aware of and less uh, tuned into my subconscious mind's um, thought processes, or when I am not cautious of protecting this space and protecting the thoughts that, uh, or not even the thoughts truly, because they are beliefs at that point, when I'm not cautious of protecting that energy, I see less results. I see fewer results in my business. Like that's just what it is. I make more money when I'm actively mindful 
of abundance, when I'm actively mindful of my thought processes, when I'm actively mindful of my belief systems, and when I'm actively mindful of the energetic vibration, the frequency, if you will, within which I'm operating on a daily basis. So I want to encourage you, if you are finding yourself in a place inside of your life or inside of your business where you're like, you know, I want more. I want more. Okay, that's great. I love that you're willing to um, to own that. We should. We need to own that. We're not socialized typically to own that we want more, especially if you're someone, um, you know, who's a female who's uh, been raised in this patriarchal sort of society. We are not taught to lean into our wants and to own them. So if you're doing that, good for you. Also, <laughs> also, let's be cautious not to just own our wants, but also to create spaces inside of our belief systems that say we can have those wants. We can have those wants. In fact, we're creating those wants every day. We're creating our path towards those wants. We're doing what's necessary to allow for those wants to become our realities. When we can own that, we will see more results. And I do see more results. And that's why I wanted to share this with you today. So if this is your first time hearing, you know, hearing me talk about the law of attraction or if it's your first time hearing this concept of, you know, manifestation or the law of attraction and so forth, I really just want to leave you with with one big thing. And that is that our thoughts inform our behaviors, inform our actions, inform our identities. And so if you are someone who struggles with uh, current environments, if you're someone who struggles with current circumstances, current identities that speak to less than what you want, that I want you to begin to engage and begin to interrogate the subconscious thoughts, the beliefs that exist for you right now and see where you can make some adjustments. A very easy way for you to do this is with the journaling. So if there's something that you find that you're like, okay, I can see here where I am putting out this lower energy or I'm putting out this energy of lack or I'm putting out this energy of pessimism or of negativity or, you know, of self-doubt. Okay, let's, let's change those. And a very easy way that you can do that is with, again, with journaling, I would suggest and, you know, for that, write an affirmation that speaks to the opposite, that speaks to the positive, that speaks to the possibility, that speaks to you can do it. You can have that. In fact, you are creating it right now and you are creating it with ease. And have that affirmation be something that you revisit regularly, daily, multiple times a day, in fact, so that you can begin to rewire the belief system that exists around that in your own mind and in your life. And then, of course, if you can find small ways to signal abundance to yourself on a daily basis, I strongly encourage it. All right. So if this made sense to you and you're like, yeah, I can get on board, then I want to invite you over to the Hennepreneur community on Facebook. We're going to be having a little bit of conversation around this. And I'd love to know um, what is your new affirmation so that you can begin to rewire your subconscious mind and begin to, um, you know, clean up, if you will, and elevate the beliefs that you have about yourself and your abilities, I'd love to know that affirmation. So you're welcome to share it with us there. And also, of course, if there is a tip or a trick or a way that you like to signal abundance to yourself or that you can commit to signaling abundance to yourself in a new way moving forward, I'd love it if you share it with us there um, as we're having that discussion. So I will jump off of here for now and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. Hey friend, I just want to give you a quick thank you for tuning into this episode of the Hennapreneur podcast. And I hope that you're really enjoying connecting with me in this way. You can find links to all of the content shared today in the show notes located at hennapreneur.com slash podcast. If you enjoyed the show and would like to stay in the loop with Hennapreneur, be sure to subscribe to the podcast too. You'll get access to all of the new episodes and to surprise bonus episodes as soon as they're released. I'd be so grateful to you if you'd take a moment to rate and leave a review on Apple Podcasts as well. This helps me to reach more artists like you who would love and benefit from the show. For more ways to connect and work with me or to join me inside of the Hennapreneur community, pop over to hennapreneur.com. I can't wait to support you as you chase your big audacious goals, one henna design at a time.